27 today. It's about as cold as it gets for this time of year, for midday. Supposed to go down probably close to minus 30 tonight. That's Mercury, by the way. Like I say, if you talk to lots of people, they'll tell you it's minus 40. But what they're talking about is some sort of a construct of uh, what they call wind chill factor. Anyway, today I wanted to talk about something came to mind. This idea of subjective, objective, and in relation to conjecture also. Those three words, we see the word ject in there, and I'm not, I haven't had a chance to look that up, but let's suppose it means us. The ject, or the jester, or the ject, I don't know. Inject, put, I'm not sure, but I'll, I'll look it up anyways later. However, if we were to say that it us, is us, the ject, what we have is we have ob, we have con, and we have sub, right? Now this is purely opinion here, I didn't, once again, didn't look this stuff up this morning, but let's just say for ease of looking at things and the importance of the way we form our perspectives and our approach to life and our success or whatever it is in improving the quality of our life experience. The, they're all important, right? But objective, let's say that that means, let's say the ob means up, right? And if we, if we think back to that concept that I've presented a few times called the order of creation, if we think of up as like higher than us or our, you know, what we depend upon or what, what's, what is, what is in existence regardless of us. In other words, if I was to just drop dead today and, and crash off the road while I'm driving, well, all that snow would still be there. You know, this pickup truck that's passing me would still be there. You know, the blue sky would still be there. That's all, that all exists independent of us individually. So it's kind of like, and, and you know, we depend on it. Uh, you know, individually we depend on the air, we depend on water, we depend on the elements. In fact, our very physical makeup is elements. So in a way, we are below the objects, the ob, the up, right? So we are the, yeah, we're, we're, th that's the up, the object. So it's not really us, I guess. So just look, we'll focus on those words. The up, the sub, the subjective, the sub, sub means under. So the subjective is under us. So something that's subjective, it means that we created it. Right? So therefore it's it's lesser than. If I am to crash off the road at this moment and die individually this whole conversation, this camera goes flying out of my hand and this whole conversation is done, kaput. There is no more subjective thoughts coming out of me individually. Now we have heard the term conjecture before. It's like opinions, right? I once heard it said that opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one. Well, you got more than we only have one of the former. We got lots of the, la of the latter, rather, lots of the former. But nevertheless, conjecture being opinion, it sort of becomes subjective, right? Unless it's based on something, unless it's, it's a blend of what we're creating and what we and what is objectively real. And con, of course, C O N, in its root means with. So, it's with us. It's with us. It's our opinion. So in terms of, you know, how we live our lives, I, I'm sure that you're very similar to, to me in that you have been told lots of things which are not based in objective reality. They are based in subjective 
somebody's subjective reality, but nevertheless they're taught as though they they are subjective. Uh, there's lots of examples of this. You know, there's nationalism and religions and customs, social contracts, all of these sorts of things which don't exist except in the minds of man. And therefore, they're just words, right? They're words that are codified or whatever they are, but they're written down as words. And we're taught them as though they are real, as though they exist in the in the in the up in the up objective, right? Now why is this important? along the lines of improving the quality of our life experience. Well, I would say it's important, not so much that the subjective, in other words, what we create in our minds, it's not that that's, it's not that it's not real to us. I mean, when you or I have a dream, we wake up in the morning, or are we just thinking, sitting down and mulling something over? That is true, right? I mean, if, if, you're, gonna, if you're gonna build a house, and you're planning about it and you're sitting down and you're thinking about, okay, what am I going to do with this room and that room? You can actually see that room in your, in your mind, right? You can see it. It's not, you can't deny that that's not real. The thing is that it only exists in your mind though, as far, at least as far as anybody can discover. And therefore, in order to relate it to anybody else, we have to, we have to use reason and evidence. We have to be able to describe it. We have to have a good a good sense of, you know, grammar, logic, rhetoric. Remember the old trivium, the way of the way of coalescing our thoughts into a, into a presentable manner. Or we have to show the physical thing. We have to build a model of it, or draw a picture of it, or if it's actually real. I talked a while ago about my son. My son and I were talking about you know. A, a, an example of a statue on the side of the road, side of the street. You drive past it, go home, and say, I, I saw this interesting statue on the side of the street. <clears throat> well, if that was my dream, I wouldn't be able to take him back and show it to him, except through my own clever use of words, but I still wouldn't show it to him. But if it was real, we could walk back there or get in the car and drive and go, go show it to him, so he would see what I saw. I think the reason why this is important is because when we communicate with others, and indeed communicate with ourselves, if we can differentiate between, and be honest with ourselves, with what is objective, what is, what is, what is independent of us individually, and it's, it's, it's related of course, I mean like we talked about before how we're all interconnected, yes, but it's, it exists independent of us individually, you know, this road here, that you know, dried, frozen grass over there, those, that frozen little lake there. That all exists whether I'm here individually or not. But my thoughts, and even if it's not my thoughts originated from my thoughts, but stuff that I've adapted, I've, you know, if I belong to a religion which believes in all these deities, and so does everybody else, well, still it's my thought in a way because I've taken it upon myself to bring that in and it only exists in my thoughts. I can't actually show somebody the deity. And if I do, if I say, well, this guy over here is the deity, well, the other guy might say, well, I'm not just another guy. You know, you're just saying it's a deity. But what it is, is another guy. So, important in terms of improving the quality of our life experience, well, we become more real, right? We can, do, we can distinguish what's objective clearly, we know it anyways. It's just a matter of us admitting it. We know what's objective. We know what's we know what we didn't create, which is what we depend on and which is above us. And we know what we create. Because what's in our mind that we can't actually prove to anybody is subjective because it's sub it's under us. It's under us because it's like the birdhouse that we created, that we built. It ex it, its existence in our reality depends on us giving it credence, giving it creation, right? 
and therefore the difference. Hope this is helpful. I I know I a lot of times I'm thinking of these things myself, but I'm kind of coming to terms with them and just want to share coming to terms with them in, ter in terms of how I how I how I experience them or how I how I'm understanding them. I could be wrong. I could be completely off base here. And if I am, I I hope to be able to become more uh, enlightened to what is more correct. But nevertheless, uh, perhaps an interesting conversation. I'll sign off for now and just show you a little bit more of the landscape and the uh, frigid cold air. I'll show you the smokestacks of this truck coming towards us here. You'll see the exhaust pumping out. It's not mostly exhaust, mostly humidity that hits the, the very, very cold air and immediately condenses into water and then of course ice crystals probably. But you can see, sure it certainly has a beauty to it, but you freeze pretty quickly out there. That's for sure. Alright, nice talking again. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.